Dude, this is actually so cool. Like, I, I already want to start a podcast. How yeah. much are these headphones cost? Uh, like, I don't even want to make a podcast. I just want to talk like this for the rest of my life. <laughs> Dude, if my voice sounded like this, we could definitely start a podcast. I could be a radio host like this. <laughs> you could, Austin. Like, no, m- now oh, look at him. No, no. Look at, hey, hey, look at him now. Now he's trying super hard <laughs> to act he's like he's relaxed. Arms up. <laughs> I've been shooting ducks since I was two. I was carving decoys since I was three. <laughs> we could have sound effects here. After the five top cars showed up, play this That's one. how the Joe Rogan yeah. experience starts. Oh, it is. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, everyone, to the Campus Waterfowl Podcast. I'm your host, Derek Christians, and this week on the podcast, I am sitting here in in the dorms uh, at North Dakota State College of Science. Is that yeah. correct, guys? Yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Nailed it. So this was a last-minute trip of our – kind of a last-minute planned trip for our Collegiate Waterfowl Tour, second trip of the season – we're here in North Dakota. It's the second week of the the resident uh, duck o- duck season, and the in the opener weekend of non-resident duck season. I unfortunately am not shooting this weekend, um, but these guys uh, were gracious enough to let me come up here for the weekend, hang out with them, um, crash crash in the dorms with them, and and just have a good time. We had a good hunt this morning. Did a lot of scouting. We're seeing some birds um, conditions wise up here. I think we're going to talk probably talk about in the podcast a little bit more in depth but before we get talking about these guys' background stories and everything that we're doing this weekend um, first have to thank ken cartridge for supporting the collegiate waterfowl tour Uh, they actually have a new uh, load this year it's called fast steel plus which is a stacked load Uh, this weekend we're actually shooting two fours and i i'm sure it's going to get brought up in this episode (laughs) about uh, some of their these guys' initial uh, reactions and kind of thoughts on the ammo this, from this morning's uh, hunt. So also we have to thank Benelli USA for supporting the tour. Uh, Super Black Eagle 3, the M2, the the old reliable is what I call the the Nova, Super Nova. So um, very, very fortunate to have two great sponsors to support what we're doing this hunting season, support Campus Waterfowl, and then also, more importantly, support the students um, that are the, the people that are kind of rep- obviously representing the next generation, and they're the ones doing all the work and putting in a lot of work to get go out there, go hunting, but then also doing the research and doing the fundraising for conservation as well. So thank you for to Ken Cartridge and Benelli for supporting Campus Waterfowl. Greatly appreciate it. Some housekeeping things. Uh, we're in full swing here at Campus Waterfowl with the Collegiate Waterfowl Tour, this being only the second trip of the, of the season uh, of our probably 12 to 13 trips that we're going to be going on. Uh, so we're going to have a lot of content coming at you guys on YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, all those platforms, obviously. And a uh, lot, of, lot of good stuff planned. I think we're going to have some diverse hunting on this year's tour and uh, something that I think you guys are going to look forward to. One thing that I should bring up is how I kind of came about to finding this North Dakota State College of, of Science and how I ended up here this weekend. Uh, I think that would be a good question for AJ to AJ, answer. <laughs> uh, you wanna, before we get into introductions, AJ, you, you want to kind of describe how I ended up coming here this weekend? <laughs> yeah, so I was, I was literally sitting in class, and I was just scrolling through TikTok, and I happened to click on your story. I seen that you just like posted, hey, I need a I need a place to hunt this weekend. No plans fell through last minute. So I was like, ah, oh, it's a shot in the dark, but I'll just send him the name of my campus. So I sent it to you, and I just went back to whatever I was doing. And I looked at my phone, and I was like, holy crap, he DM'd me back. And then I think we just kind of started talking, and he was just asking me how the hunt was up here. Mm-hmm. And then we just stuff kind of got rolling from there for sure yeah and that was wednesday and wednesday right yeah. now it's saturday so it's saturday. it was very last minute. <laughs> that was just a few days ago yes and, um yeah and that and that's obviously like we all know it's it, that's hunting where like you really don't know if you're going to be out in the field um until probably that friday night beforehand so um being able to yeah change change on a dime uh reach out to my audience and get some responses real quick and be able to have a uh, change of plans and have it be able to yeah all come together super last minute i can't thank you guys enough for for uh, letting me come up here and, and highlight you guys so um and of course like don't don't act like don't don't be surprised when i message you back i try to get back right. to as many messages I mean, as, as possible <laughs> it was just it was like crazy like aj called me in class and said yo i think i think campus waterfall might come up here and home with us and i'm like well that's like no way and 
I don't know. We were we were all just shaking in our boots, just waiting. <laughs> it's it's a crazy thing to think, but like, oh my gosh, like someone that you've been watching, like waterfall industry, and that they coming up and like, hunting with you. That's just a crazy thing mm-hmm. to think about. Mm-hmm. And it, yeah, it's, it's. I feel like when I was in college, I I would have thought the same thing, where it's like yeah, like you know, big page or whatever you want to want to call it. But it's like having that opportunity for to take someone out that you've kind of watched on social media and things I, I definitely would have acted the same way but now being in the position i'm in it's just kind of fun to hear that it's like like i don't want you to think like i'm anyone special like i'm just a guy that's running just a social media page i guess that's has some success so um but no i think let's get in some introductions uh, aj you want to start us out with kind of um, your background and who you are and what you're doing here yeah so uh my name is aj miller and i'm originally from eau claire wisconsin and I came to NDSCS to study electrical and then get that and head into the workforce. Um, I'm Austin Ryder. Um, I'm from Melrose, Minnesota, and uh, I'm here for John Deere Tech, so two-year diesel program, and then after that, work in the diesel industry, see what happens. I'm Jack Ellering. I'm here for the HVAC program here. Uh, Two-year program, nice and simple, get you a good degree, and then get into the workforce, start making some money. Nice. My first question, too, especially for AJ and you, too, as well, like, you guys are all out of state. Uh, We're in North Dakota here. Um, Was it the program that brought you here, or was it the hunting? (laughs) Um, Well, for me, it was there's only a handful of schools that kind of offer, like, an electrical program like this. Like, not too many really offer, like, even two-year schools don't really offer – electrical program like this. I know the two-year tech by me, they don't offer an electrical program. So that kind of mixed with, you know, my love of hunting. Mm -hmm. And I was like, North Dakota's got good hunting. I've hunted out there before. I would love to go out there and hunt long term and then also go to school to get a degree. So I just, it was kind of a no-brainer to come here. Yeah, for me it was probably, well, the um, diesel program here, all three or four of them. They're known for being some of the best in the country, I one could argue. Um, but, yeah, the waterfowl hunting was definitely a part of my choice, um, knowing that it was a possibility if I wanted to on the weekends that I could go hunting and see, uh, just experience it, experience something different from central Minnesota hunting. Yeah, I would say waterfowl was definitely one of the biggest reasons why I came out here. I mean, the program was great out here, and I would have, Probably if I wouldn't went to like caribou hunting so much, I probably would just went to Alec Deck or something. But mm-hmm. it's just it's North Dakota is a whole different animal when it comes to waterfowl hunting, and it definitely draws a lot of attention. So mm-hmm. get some good res get resident license here, and that's a pretty big win when you come here to college. So and you guys are all first years here, correct? Yep. yep. You guys had some experience coming in with waterfowl hunting. I I assume like have you guys what what are your what is your backgrounds with waterfowl hunting? I've been I've been waterfowl hunting since a young age. I know these guys talk about diver hunting. I since me being from Central Wisconsin, I haven't done a whole lot of diver hunting, but puddle ducks, geese, lot field hunting is really big for geese where I am. Mm-hmm. So I, that's my background. I kind of dabble in puddle ducks and geese. So surprisingly enough, I my, none of my family members, my dad, mom, none of them actually hunted at all. So. Um, I kind of saw people doing it, and I was like, that looks fun. I want to do that. So at first I started, like, you know, uh, figuring things out on my own. I'm like, yeah, that ain't that ain't going to work. So I got some advice from some really helpful people. Um, but, yeah, for me it was really um, a new world coming into uh, middle school and high school especially, the whole waterfowl hunting thing. Waterfowl has been a part of me f- since I was born. I feel like my dad was huge into it with all his buddies, and I just I loved it all the way from the beginning, and he just kept me very enthused in it, kept me engaged, and taught me the good sides of it. A lot of There's a lot of hard work that goes into it, but the reward out of it is just so big, and it just makes you feel so good, and it's hard not to love the sport. And, I don't know. It just it keeps me coming back every season. Right, right. Jack and Austin, um, for for you guys, so you guys mentioned you guys did go to high school together. Yep. Did you guys know that you guys had waterfowl, like you both enjoyed waterfowl hunting, and did you guys go on hunts together throughout high school? We never really hunted together, but we, we knew that each other yeah. did. Was it a big high school too, I guess? Uh, it was like 100, 100 kids. 100, yeah. Okay, yeah. 100 graduating class. The thing about like where we've come from, it's 
like we don't have like fields of geese that are just stacked like we it's so hard to hunt like you're hunting groups of like four or five so like i had like my group of friends and there's just a whole bunch of group of friends that just kind of hunt ponds and like i did a lot of diver hunting it's hard to fit a lot of guys in a boat Mm -hmm. (laughs) and i mean we had a few occasions where you get a lot of geese but you never could really get on the fields with like a lot like you couldn't pile your classmates into a field like there just wasn't enough birds in the area Mm -hmm. and there's yeah it's it's just different circumstances but I mean, we've knew each the high school we went together. Everyone waterfall hunted, and we all were showing yeah. show each other pictures. We come home on class on Monday morning and be like, "Oh, look, how'd you guys do this weekend?" And everyone was super mm-hmm. enthused, and yeah, it was a great community to be in. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. that's kind of to continue on with that. It's like when you when you say like a lot of your classmates waterfowl hunting. I feel like not too many other people could say that around the country where a lot of their the classmates would waterfowl hunt. Oh, it's, it's, it's definitely popular. Like once you start getting like from St. Cloud, the further West you get, I feel like it's really more popular. Like mm-hmm. once you get up to Fergus here, it's, it's crazy. A lot of the kids, like if you were from Fergus and you don't hunt geese, mm-hmm. I mean, that's pretty crazy. Mm-hmm. I, I've, I guess it was, just, I was just thought natural for me. I never really thought much about it, but there's definitely some good, I feel like with all Minnesota, with all the lakes, there's a lot more areas to get out. So you might not realize that there's as many hunters because you're more spread out. And like, if you're like from Wisconsin, AJ didn't have as much water. So there's all the birds are kind of more compact. So it's, everyone's kind of in one little area. And AJ now, so you, you come out here. How the, how in the world did you guys meet? We, the <laughs> moving day. This we, moving day. I, we, I knew the names of them and I had, I had like looked them up on Instagram, you know, just to make sure they, they were like <laughs> kind of cool guys. And I just, I saw that most of them waterfall hunted. I'm like, oh yeah, I'll get along with these guys just fine. Yeah. So was it enough to? Was it like so? This was bef- you guys met before moving day or like on no, moving no, move 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 day? day. I have I, the only one I knew was Austin coming into it. We mm-hmm. actually lucked out pretty good. All our roommates are great, and I mean, yeah. we all have very similar interests. So. Did you guys do like I know some colleges do like those similarity tests kind of mm-hmm. before coming to no, college? Not really, I think you kind of just luck out because with <laughs> the two year with the two year program, everyone I mean, you kind of attract the same kind of people. Mm-hmm. So. I, I, I think they might have just, like, put a lot of the kids from out of state, been like, oh, these kids are out of state. They'd probably get along good, and they'd put us all in a room I mean, together. They put us in a room with a Packers fan, so I don't know really what they were. <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it's it's cool, yeah, how just college campuses can bring people from different parts of the country together and, and still even, by luck, uh, have similarities, and especially – um, in the outdoors and and more specific, specifically waterfowl hunting, and we're kind of on this this track about roommates here. Uh, there's you guys are kind of in a college apartment dorm kind of building here, um, and there's is it eight roommates yeah, total? Yeah, yeah. Yep. So there's four rooms off of one giant common room that we're in right now, um, and then each room has two people in it. And does everyone waterfowl hunt in this? Um. um I think I think, I think everyone would, everyone would want to if they got the chance to, but a lot of a lot of the kids aren't like yeah we're probably we're probably like us three are the main like hardcore yeah Ethan Ethan, Ethan over here he hunts a lot he, yeah he yeah. hunts yeah. but he, he usually goes back home yeah to he's hunt, he's only in, he's right in DL so he's not very far away yeah. so he drives home a lot but I mean he, he shot a limited duck straight before class the one morning <laughs> almost got struck by lightning doing yeah. it <laughs> but, yeah. I mean he shot a really nice greenhead and some redheads and I mean oh I that was sick yeah it was a it was crazy. I kind of wish I would have went with him, but at the same time, I need to catch him in my sleep. It's been a hard – it's, it's <laughs> past it's a few hard hard <laughs> Did you guys do a lot of the early goose too in, in August? Uh, we no. tried. <laughs> I we, don't know. I think we kind of had one experience, and it just wasn't that good, and we were just yeah. like, let's just wait till duck opener. It, it, when we got out here, so we moved in the weekend after – so the weekend before we moved in, that was like opening day. And there was a a lot of people. Like I had people from back yeah. home posting on their store. Like everyone was stacking up the geese out here. When we got out here, all the geese. I mean, you drive past a field, the geese will be sitting on the other side. They're not a single one of them is feeding. They all got their heads up looking at the truck on the road. It's like mm-hmm. so, you could tell the birds were pressured already. And we got into one field where we had a chance, but it just didn't really work out. Yeah. And there was another group trying to hunt the same birds. And it was. I'm not. I wouldn't say I'm a very good goose hunter at all. No, I. Yeah, <laughs> I struggle definitely. with the geese a lot. I. I like my ducks better. <laughs> like the I, ducks. Think, I think we all kind of just like our ducks better than our geese. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, some of our, like, we met some friends up here from now, from Fergus, and they run pits out there, and they, they the one kid knows how to goose hunt, so hopefully oh we can, he can teach us the ropes. I wish I wish he came with us. I swear every time that kid touches a call, it's just God's voice coming out of the <laughs> yeah, call. Yeah, it's, it's insane. He picked up my uh, 
fifteen dollar Walmart <laughs> call. The and power made it, clucker. Yeah, the zinc power clucker made it sound like it was like a a mul- like yeah, a expensive. Yeah, made call. it sound yeah. like he could compete um, professionally <laughs> with it. And I was like, how can you do that? Yeah. I, I was just amazed. Amazed is an understatement. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's, there's definitely a skill to goose hunting. It's yeah, yes. both sides, duck hunting, and goose hunting. It's both they're both different kind of birds, and each one of them act differently. And you kind of gotta know your bird, and kind of whichever one you specialize in is kind of the yeah. one that you do a lot of hunting. So, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. what are you? So I, I like this this conversation that we're having. Um, so with, let's start with the goose hunting. What are some things that you think that you might want to get better at that you see like that having that skill set makes a big difference in the field? Yeah, I would I would say the one th- or there's two big things that I would think I need to fix is one I don't have like nearly enough decoys to like hunt some of these huge fields with geese in. And the other thing is like I can goose call, but like, you get out there with some of those guys and they like know how to like talk to the geese and yeah. like convince them all the way. Like I can blow my call and it sounds like a goose, but like just being able to communicate with the geese back and forth and getting them to like commit right where you want them. Mm-hmm. It just some of those people just know how to talk mm-hmm. to the geese, and that's one thing that I think I need to work on, like not just blowing the call, but actually knowing what the geese want to hear and where when to use it, I guess. Yeah, that's that's probably, those are probably the bigger ones for me. I would say instead of, like, getting more decoys, for me, it'd just be, like, learning how to set up a spread for geese. Because I just, I don't really hunt geese that much, but I just want to learn, you know, how to set up a spread for geese and how to call for geese because I'm not that great of a caller. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think, yeah, for geese, it's, you're doing it, yeah, kind of like, like what you what you said where you're communicating with them. And so, like, when you communicate, you kind of got to be able to read them as well. Um, and I think that just comes with time, uh, being able to watch and seeing how the birds react to your calling and um, eventually, ho- hopefully, they, they commit to your, yeah. to your uh, decoy spread. Uh, but so then on the flip side, let's talk about duck hunting. What are some things that you feel like have – that you have specialized in within the duck hunting world that maybe set you apart from others? Honestly, the it's not decoys, it's not calling or anything. It's just being able to, like, work for some of the spots. Like, some of the spots that I've hunted, mm-hmm. like, oh, in Minnesota, it's, it's pretty hard to get some of the state land back there. Like, it's long. Like, I think last year I walked, like, two and a half miles through a muddy swamp to get back to the ducks, and it was, oh, like, pain on my ankles. <laughs> and – Ducks, I mean, if you were the one duck, where the ducks want to be, you put your decoys out there and your spinner, and it's pretty much game over. You can't. I don't know. That's, I think mm-hmm. being on the X for ducks is probably the biggest thing, mm-hmm. and being able to put in the work to get to the ducks, even if sometimes you can't drive in, sometimes you got to walk in or stuff like that. Yeah. Probably the same thing. It's just, you know, putting in the hours to find the birds. You just got to work harder than the other people that want to hunt mm-hmm. the spot. And sometimes even though you work hard, it just doesn't happen. Falls through. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Had that happen today. <laughs> Found that out this weekend, yeah. No, you guys you guys put in the work. And it's. I think big thing right now is the conditions. And, too, like we're at the weekend after duck opener where a lot of these birds did get pushed around. And it's a matter of trying to find them now and, and waiting for that next kind of push to, to get yeah. here. I would say, like, I call them kind of like the local migrators where – we're not really at the – we're not still at the local ducks, but we're at the ducks that came from maybe, like, a few miles away. Mm-hmm. So they're still, like, local, but we haven't got, like, the push of birds that have – once the birds get here, that have, like, they have no idea about the land. They just they right. just migrated in. Those are the birds that get easier to hunt. When these birds, they're, they're smart. They you know. You can tell. They know the public land. They're going to get shot there, yeah. so they don't go there. Yeah. 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 And it doesn't it – should note too like it doesn't help that you guys just got dumped on by a bunch of rain so there's yeah there's yeah. water like temporary kind of wetlands and just water yeah. watering areas just scattered throughout the fields and just across the the landscape where these ducks can just yeah. it doesn't take much for it for probably 100 200 ducks to sit in so yeah, and they're more spread out like you said like they're not compact to one little pond no, they're spread right. out between all these different fields little five packs here and there and it's hard to yep. piece all those together yeah and with the landscape being a little little hilly it's like you're not gonna be able to see every spot yeah. of, of the area from from the road so yeah no it's just the way that's hunting yeah <laughs> it's hunting it is hunting. how it is <laughs> so um so another topic is so you guys all come to north dakota uh for the first time this year or i guess you guys have maybe some experience a little bit hunting. Uh, I've never waterfowl hunted in North Dakota, but I've pheasant hunted and mule deer hunted in okay. North Dakota. So, but so what was it like going from high school to college, coming out here to a whole new area? What was that like? Well, I would say so. Where I'm from, it was all the landowners did not like the college kids because they would 
there was, the, you know, there'd be that couple of kids that would make a mess and leave a bad image for the rest of the college kids. And now coming, and then I was a local kid, obviously, so they loved me. They would give me permission for that land. And now coming from being a local kid to being one of those college kids that the farmers don't necessarily like because other kids have given us a bad image, it's just kind of like, well, now I got to do my part to stand apart from the other kids. That way that I can get permission from the farmers and all the other people that own land. Yeah, I would say with AJ, like, coming from a small town, you kind of knew everyone. You, The birds around this field like, oh, I know whose field this is. And now, like, it's like, oh, you're looking on Onyx, you get the last name, and then you're trying to find where they live. You're trying to find their numbers. And it's just it's a lot more work because you don't have the local community kind of. Yeah. It's Another thing is, like, if you're if you're a local kid and you're asking for permission, like, you don't really know the guy, but you're asking for permission, you can at least, like, strike up like start Relate small talk somehow, right yeah. like yeah. yeah you know this guy or hey you went to this event last week where in north dakota we don't really yeah. i we don't really know anybody we don't know any events so it's like just kind of getting straight to the point like hey can we mm-hmm. hunt your field you know you got to kind of like figure out your own way to make small talk mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. i think the hardest another hard thing is like he said like a lot of sometimes hunters get a bad rap like someone drove in their field and run it up or they left the garbage everywhere and it's hard to like say like, get your point across that you're not going to do that without being, like, like a- without asking permission first. Usually it's just like, well, can we hunt? And it's just no before you can, like, explain yeah. yourself. Like, it's like, well, we won't, we won't, I know it's muddy this weekend, so we won't drive in your field. Like, we said that when we went and asked permission. It's like, we know it's muddy. We'll stay out of the fields and stuff. We don't want to run it up. We'll just, we just want to get in there and get on some birds. Mm-hmm. But sometimes it's hard to get your point across before the landowner's already got his mind made up. Right. And, like, he said, if you already got here, we're like, it's hard being a Minnesota place. And he's like, yep, the blue planers. Like, <laughs> it's definitely known around here. Or, a lot yeah. of the farmers don't really like the blue platers, mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. just a few people give us a bad name. But I mean, there's a lot of there's way more people out there that are giving us a good name than I would say a bad name. But it's just a lot easier to give it a bad name than it is a good name. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think. Um, so, what are some things that you guys did to kind of get used to the area? Because it seemed like like trout going around with you guys scouting this weekend. You guys definitely knew where you were going. I would just say time. I mean. Oh, me and AJ have put some miles on. We I feel like put some miles. I think we've driven in every gravel road between here and there. <laughs> was it a lot of like even like how far out before hunting season were you guys scouting? Fields? I mean, we were looking at Two ducks. Weeks. We were looking at ducks. We should have been looking for geese. We, we were we were, we were stopping looking, at, looking at the ducks. We were driving over the ducks before like three weeks before it even yeah. we thought about it. Was, duck sun, sunset was coming. It's like oh, we haven't found any geese yet. We've been looking at these ducks all yeah, day. Like, shoot, <laughs> we better find some birds that we're like trying to hunt, not just yeah. these ducks. But, it definitely helped out. Put some pins down on Onyx, and then opening weekend came around. We drove yeah. around. We 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 kind of knew where we wanted to go right yeah. away. We drove right out there, and we we were pretty much well, dead actually, set. The first time we went scouting for geese early season, we found this pond of amazing ducks. It was it had so many ducks in it, and we ended up hunting that for opener, and yeah. that's where we shot our limits. Yeah, we did good. Two days out of there, two limits out of there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, I think it's one one fun thing to watch this weekend was, um, so yeah, we we did we did a lot of scouting friday night and also this afternoon saturday afternoon um i can't remember how many probably asked for permission what a handful of times which uh, house up, up to, yeah, <laughs> yeah up to going yeah. up to the door talking talking to a farmer but uh a lot of the times it was fun watching the the possibility of bringing up like your guys's majors and what you were doing especially um Austin here with the diesel mechanics. Like he, he was always look striking a conver- look, trying to look for a well, way I'm to talk. To, I'm trying to find a way in, make the farmer like actually relate to us. Exactly. A more. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Like if there was one farmer, he was working on a piece of equipment, and I'm like asking what he's doing, you know, and he's talking to me, and I feel like that kind of made him lighten up a little bit and mm-hmm. actually talk to us better and not be so blunt i guess yeah we actually like it's once you get like a conversation going that's not just about hunting we were starting to talk about like the pheasant hatch and like you could tell he wanted to like he was he loved the pheasants he said that he -hmm. he was feeding them in his yard in the winter and he was happy to see him hatch and we were like yeah it's like it was a good hatch they had a good season and stuff and you just gotta find the sweet spot yeah and it it wasn't just about like hey can we hunt your land and then yes no one leave it was like a conversation we were trying to carry it out Mm -hmm. so it's it's good to see like we the last place that we went and asked permission for that lady that answered she was so nice like it's it's good to see people like that are still willing to give chances like yeah. we even we ended up calling them back because we switched our we switched spots where we wanted to hunt it was the same property we just wanted to switch the area a little bit and with the one road he was like he didn't really want he didn't know people were driving down there because the, it was a bean field and we were like well it looks like there's people already driving down here and he he just he was like well i don't really like that people were driving down there but 
He's like, if you guys can promise me you'll stay off the beans, then you guys can go down there. And it's like, he wasn't mad at us, that other people. He's not like, well, now that yeah. someone ruined it, you guys are done. He mm-hmm. just said, someone did it, oh, well, but you guys, I'm letting you guys, like, prove yourselves. Mm-hmm. Like, you guys can do it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And, I, and I think a big piece of that, the reason why he did that was because of your approach of of how you were able to – not just how you carried yourself in the conversation. I think that was a big role um, in to him uh, kind of trusting you and that knowing that you would make the, the right decision and, and that you would obviously stay off the beans and, and stick to his his uh, guidelines, I guess. Yeah. So I, yeah, applaud you on, on that. And I think that goes to show, I, I think college students um, across the country too, I think there's a, a stereotype there of just your stereotypic college student, um, but I think a lot of um, students carry themselves with a lot of um, what's what's the word? Well, they they want to. I'd say college students want to carry themselves in a very respectable manner to the landowner. Okay. Well, it's like we want to be polite, but like it's also I don't want to embarrass myself either. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean. They're old guys. I want to – I look up to them. They yeah. they know a lot of stuff. I don't want to embarrass myself in front of them, and I want to be polite to them because they just – they probably forgot more than I'll ever know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's – it it definitely makes, like, if you prove yourself, and then it, it gives that farmer a chance, like, okay, well, maybe maybe things are turning around. And that's what, like – that's why you got to do that kind of stuff is, like, we're not we're not, not driving on the field for our – to make our hunt better not better. It's – we want to be able maybe be able to hunt this field next year again. Like, you want to be able to keep it going on. You want to keep the waterfall alive, and you want to keep that trust in there because, I mean, the more farmers that don't want to hunt, the less hunting you're going to be able to do. Like, you can definitely tell in North Dakota the posting has been way up. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, everything's a lot more posted. I mean, not all that has to do with – I'm not saying that's all farmers that are mad because it's definitely not a lot of it's people actually hunting. Hunting, yeah. And they just lease it out, and that's totally okay, but it's – it definitely helps out a lot when you prove yourself. And, like, the sign, the one posted sign that we went and asked permission for today, it didn't say, like, no trespassing, like, all right. angry. It was just said, ask permission before entering. Mm-hmm. Like, it was just like, we'll probably give you permission, but we just want to know that you're out there. And that's, I I feel like that was a way better approach at it than, like, the no trespassing. And, mm-hmm. and like, another thing is, like, if we be polite to these har- farmers, I'm hoping that, like, they'll spread the word, like, hey, I had these really polite young group of men come up and, they're from the, you know, NDSCS, the local college in Wapton, and they were really polite. They asked me for permission. I went out into the field after they were there. They didn't leave a mess or anything. They picked up all their shells, and hopefully that just spreads from farmer to farmer. And then when we go to ask for permission, they'll maybe at least hear us out. Yeah, instead of just the no right away. No right away. Yeah, and that's what Adrian just said. They're picking up your garbage, I feel like, is a huge thing. Like, yeah. even on some of the stay lands and stuff, like, we always, you saw it today, we always bring with a bucket, we always pick up our shells and stuff. Because mm-hmm. It nothing looks worse than when after you just you stack up the ducks and then you leave and you're, you're you just got it's shells everywhere and it's like like today what's we that found doing? a whole hunting jacket <laughs> yeah. Like, who, yeah did you just not like the hunting jacket and leave it there mm-hmm. like just yeah. take your stuff with you man <laughs> yeah and it it it, it doesn't really good like I mean it's cool finding old shotgun shells every once in a while but like it it's I don't know when you find garbage on stay land and stuff it's like no. you got to clean up after yourself like yeah. we're trying to keep these waters nice and clean and I mean these birds want to. I wouldn't want to be swimming around in a bunch of plastic. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I was I was a Boy Scout, and that's like the the first thing they taught you was leave no trace. And every time I'm hunting, it's like gotta leave the place better than I found it, even if it's not my shell or not my garbage. Yep. Pick it up, take it with you. Yep. It's not. It's like two seconds of work. Yeah, and it like you gain a lot from it. You, you feel right. better about yourself too. Mm-hmm. To kind of change gears a little bit, uh, talked about a lot of kind of what you guys grew up doing. Um, what do you guys kind of specialize in and then kind of where we're at now in college. What are you guys looking forward to this hunting season? I, I would say freeze out. I'm so psyched. <laughs> like it gets so crazy out here in North Dakota. Like once, once the ice starts forming on the edges and it starts shrinking up and it gets crazy. I mean, lots of people come out here, which is great because it moves birds around, but there's just enough birds for everyone. And you can't not have fun. A good snowy day. If you're not having fun sitting in an A-frame with a buddy heater in front of you and it's snowing out and you just got mallards cupped up in your face, if you don't enjoy that, then <laughs> you're in the wrong game. It's funny, like you say that, because we're the second weekend of hunting season. You're already looking forward to pretty much the end of the season. Yeah. It's it's definitely the best. It's, it's like a bittersweet. <laughs> I would say, honestly, for me, it's just the migration because in Wisconsin, the migrators we do see are, like, they're so high up, they just, they're gone. 
they're right past you. So it's like here, you get a chance to hunt the migrators, the big birds, the big ones, you know. Yeah. It's it's going to be fun. <laughs> I'm going to have to agree with Jack on that one. The way he – I remember one day – and he came back to class one week, and he was just talking about it. Oh, freeze out North Dakota. Oh, oh it's so insane. Oh, we were just <laughs> we were just pounding him. He showed me pictures, and I'm like, no way. And honestly, after hearing about that, I'm I'm pretty pretty excited to see what that's all gonna be about this yeah, winter. It's it's a whole different experience. Like you, the one day uh, last year was a really hard freeze out. It actually didn't freeze out very slow at all. It went from like mm-hmm. like warm weather to it was little ponds froze over in like two days and birds moved fast and the one day we sat on the blind and we probably we we never stopped seeing snow geese it was just a constant trickle of snow geese over us the whole day and it's just crazy to see like all those birds and like all the ducks and i mean it's just amazing and it just shows that there's that many birds out there like he was like like this weekend it was a little bit harder to find birds like well there are birds out there but they're out there somewhere they're still Mm -hmm. coming Mm mm-hmm yeah, there's there's definitely more more to come this <laughs> hunting season. Yeah, but it's for sure. just crazy. But uh, you always talk about like we're out here in North Dakota. We we feel like we're spoiled. You went to college in South Dakota. You should like tell us about that. Like that's just crazy. It's I, about the same thing. But yeah, but you have the a, birds that g- like go through South or go through uh, or yeah go through South Dakota came from North Dakota. I know, but I just feel like South Dakota is like there's a lot it's, less pressure than North Dakota. It's the place to be. Yeah, I don't know you. I don't know. I I would say like yeah, there's there's probably a little bit less pressure, but it's I don't know. You're still trying to get on good spots and and everything like that. It's I don't I don't, I don't see a big difference between the two, honestly. Um, you you still got to put in the miles. Yeah. Uh, that, that that's honestly the biggest thing always is just putting in the miles, doing the scouting, and just try finding the birds. So. I guess going back to the thing you said, who looking forward to in the season, I just thought of this spell right now, but I've never hunted the spring snow goose season out here. And we have, we met two buddies from the, actually the same buddies are from Fergus Falls and they, they hunt it and they said they would bring us out. And I'm actually looking forward to that. (laughs) I'm excited. The way they talk that up, that just sounds like a crazy time. Like sometimes they said, sometimes you do a lot of work for no birds and sometimes you do Mm -hmm. no work for for a lot lot of birds. birds. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm excited for that. It'd it'd be cool to see that. And yeah, I'm that's, I'm pumped for that too. Yeah. Cause like, the, just the idea of hunting birds in the spring, yeah. it's just, like, besides turkeys, obviously, but it's, like, it, it feels weird to me. Like, it feels, like, almost, like, Cheating. like it feels, like, illegal, but it's, <laughs> in North Dakota, it's not. You can, it's well, legal. So snow, snow geese. geese. Yeah. Snow geese, obviously. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're not right. no dog. <laughs> yeah, no, go, I, go shoot our six, man. I, I think, <laughs> yeah. It's fun talking to the guys that chase, yeah, the snows in the spring because it's, like, they they wonder why they do it, and then until that that big flock of snows does it right. It's like that makes it all worth it. And, yeah. And well, some of the videos. I mean, you see those videos all over Instagram and stuff. Tornadoes. All those tornadoes of geese, yeah. and then they just lace into them, and it seems like those geese are falling for like five minutes, and that mm-hmm. just amazes me. It's like wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I can't imagine that that many birds coming straight down on top of you and just yeah. laying there, and they have the, out of all of those eyeballs, not a single one knows that you're there. <laughs> yeah, or they do, and they just follow the game. It seems like a lot of birds, like ducks and stuff, like the back of the group's kind of like skidding off but that one bird turns and the rest of them are like okay right. <laughs> <laughs> follow the leader all yeah. the way down yep. Simon says <laughs> mm-hmm. now there's a lot of opportunities in uh, in North Dakota and then just the Dakotas in general um, I think and I think one one topic that gets always brought up I feel like with the Dakotas is the out of state pressure how has like given that we all kind of experienced that? I mean, South Dakota State, and then you guys all coming in the North Dakota. Like, how have you guys experienced kind of any positive or negative, I guess, perspectives that you might have come across in the field being out of staters? Well, I would say last weekend we had kind of well, I, I guess it wasn't out of staters, but just like pressure and normal, we had another group set up by us and when they would shoot the birds that they wouldn't get would be pushed over to us so that was a chance for us to get more birds towards our limit yeah we're helping each other out pushing birds back Mm -hmm. and forth on the pond and they just kept going back and forth it was a big pond so Mm -hmm. but i i feel like like everyone's like oh like you once you come out here like now we're like considered student Mm residents and now it's like oh now all the people have to come out here but like can you we, I used to be that guy coming out here yeah. from a different state, and it, it's just hard. Like, everyone loves the sport. I mean, 
everyone wants to have the spot. Like, it's hard to, like, oh, those guys got the spot. Like, I wish there was them. But it's like, so everyone's got it. Like, they There's enjoy the birds. Sp- they enjoy the sport too. Like they're having a good time. Like you can't be mad at yeah. anyone for going out hunting. It's like mm-hmm. even if they get the spot before you, like they're gonna go have a good time. And mm-hmm. you gotta just keep trying. Like mm-hmm. that's the game. You got your way. If ever if you got the best spot every time, then no one else would hunt. <laughs> and, and I kind of want to make a, a note for the audience too. And it's not just the Dakotas. It happens all across the country where people are coming into into the state and hunting. And I think you're seeing more and more of that just over time because of just the tran- just the the amount of information being shared in today's digital age i think is people are seeing the successes of others in these areas um and i think oh where was i going with this that yeah in those er- in those areas and then yeah those consumers or hunters making those decisions to commit to the travel costs of going out there for a given weekend or two or it's an annual trip that they might make out um to put on the books every year so it's not just the dakotas that experience the out-of-state hunters but i think yeah the the topic of it it's it's very interesting to me just to, to to discuss it and i like your your answer of kind of you kind of just have to work with it yeah um in a sense and i think wh- where we're at is we kind of have to look for a solution of how can we better this and and i think one thing that is a, a possible solution is like when you look at out of state hunters that that comes up because of just the um i would say the density of hunters you could say in accessible land that you can actually hunt so it's just more encounters with out of state hunters in these areas because there are potentially less ground that we can hunt so what are your guys's thoughts on that yeah there's definitely a lot like as the years have gone like when i came up here when i was younger with my dad it seemed like there wasn't nearly as much stuff posted as there is now like a lot of stuff gets a lot more stuff's posted now which it it forces a lot of hunters to hunt like closer together like a lot more people hunt state land now like you can't not gonna be the only ones on state land and it's hard to find a pri like a it's hard to find like the north dakota field is like not posted not posted online like you can just go out there and it's hard to find that now and like now north dakota is almost i would say a permission state like Mm, yeah it's it's very rarely if you're in an area with good birds and you the field's not posted i i feel like that's pretty rare Mm -hmm. like i mean there's lots of fields out here that aren't posted but it's usually because there's not really that many birds in the area like north dakota everyone thinks like the whole state's just amazing but you definitely dial it down to a few spots in the state because and it's like you say everybody's like everybody thinks that North Dakota is an amazing state, but it's like a lot of it's posted, so you got to have backup plans because you can't always rely on your that first field to be a reliable option because the landowner could say no or last minute could be like, hey, I have a a friend that's gonna hunt the field instead. You got to have backup options. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah, we, we experienced that. We we did experience that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Hunting in these areas, you definitely always. Oh, you should always have a backup plan. Um, but no, I, that's, I appreciate you guys answering because, yeah, it's something that I think a lot of people kind of question um, and just have a lot of opinions on. Yeah, it's. I feel like it's definitely a very touchy subject for a lot of people. Yeah. And it, you always hear about, like, so many hunters getting in each other's throats about who's really been to the spot. And I feel like in the long run, we all just have to realize that we're all out here for the same reason. Because we, we all enjoy this, it. We all yeah. enjoy it. Like, if we if we're just gonna fight over it the whole time, then how is that enjoying? Like, right? T- I don't think anyone's ever been like, "Oh, I, that was such a fun hunt. I'm so excited that we fought the whole time. <laughs> I didn't shoot any birds." <laughs> I think yeah, like it takes time to to see the issue, and it takes time to come to a solution. So I think I think right now we're in a phase of we re- we know the, what the issue is, and I think we're in a transition period where we're looking for a solution, yep. and, and it's just a matter of time. I feel like another thing, too, is everyone, like, a lot of people look at the bad a lot more than they look at the good. Like, how many other hunters did we talk to this weekend that were, we never met one that was mean. Everyone was nice. nice. Everyone, like, everyone just looks at the the few times that it did not go well. Right. When a majority of the hunters out here are amazing guys. And, I mean, we we talked to one guy for, like, 20 minutes. He was just out here hunting with his two daughters. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can get... Any like, more better than that. If, if we would have been going to a spot and that guy would have been there, I probably would have been like, you know what, you can hunt here because yeah. you've got kids. Yeah. They 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 would enjoy this. Yeah, you, I'm not going to take that away from them. Yeah. 
they but, they deserve to get back into the sport too. Yeah. Like I was that kid once. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And like also what you were saying is like everybody only pictures it as the bad because like people only post the bad stuff online. Like they post it because it'll get them it'll get them famous. It'll get them content. Yep. You're like hunters coming together and you know having a good time together. That's it might get you a few views and stuff, but it's not gonna get you the same amount of views as people posting guys yelling at each other and stuff. And mm-hmm. yeah, <laughs> don't get me started. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will get into it with you guys. With uh, yeah, just kind of the cl- the social media. Uh, yeah, the click. I will just call it the clickbaits. Yeah, well, I, yeah, mm-hmm. it's it's hard like not to be like, oh, I kind of want to watch, and you kind of do get into it. It's like like stuff like that. That's what kind of gives us a bad name. When in reality, like this weekend, like we said, we met we met so many nice people that were so just willing nice to work people. with us. Like mm-hmm. we got out to that stay line today, and there was another truck out there, and they weren't like, oh, like you guys are in our spot. They're just like, where are you guys hunting? We're like, oh, we're over there. Like, okay, we're just we're just gonna go over there and hunt that pond. And it's like, okay, perfect. And then we hunted. We neither of us were too yeah. close to each other or anything. Mm-hmm. And I feel like that's a lot of the people that come out here. It's just. The good times don't get highlighted as nearly as much right, as the, the bad, bad times, times are the ones that. One thing that I find myself, <laughs> so one thing joke. I find myself with it is like sometimes I feel like I get too focused on the pile. Like yeah. I just need to pile up the birds. Like oh, we didn't pile up the birds this weekend. Or it's, yeah, I had a I had a huge like realizing that I think it was like my junior junior or senior year, and I was like, I, the there was one hunt I just came home from, and we were supposed to have an amazing hunt, and I just we shot like barely any ducks, and I was just so furious. <laughs> and I got home and I sat down and I'm like. I went out hunting, and we still shot some ducks. It wasn't a bad day, and I'm mad that we didn't pile up the ducks. Like, am I really doing this for the right reason? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it was, like, kind of like today. Like, last weekend, obviously, we shot a lot of ducks. And then today, it's like we shot four ducks all day. And I was was a little frustrated, and then at the end of the day, I was like, you know what? Still had a good time. I I didn't have to do homework today. I didn't have to go to school today. I got to go out in nature and enjoy myself. Yeah, and... We sh- we shot a c- we got this kid's first cans back mm-hmm. <laughs> like mm-hmm. you gotta love that yeah love it that was unreal experience I don't think any of us will ever forget that sound no <laughs> that was that the was, most majestic sound I've like, ever heard <laughs> just whoosh like that's that's why stuff like that the little things yes. is why I think you should be into it not just the mm-hmm. oh we gotta pile up the birds not we just to make the, other people jealous shoot, shoot on the prettiest how big birds. of a pile you got and yeah. if, I feel like a lot of it's just people's egos are chasing egos they want other people to realize like hey i'm i'm better than you basically yeah. is what i think a part of it is i'm not saying that that's what all of it is but i'm saying that that that's probably an aspect that gets into some people's heads mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah it, it it's hard not it's hard to get frus- yeah, not frustrated yeah. sometimes but i don't know and you get into that like the inter- yeah, intricacies of that it's like does is it on purpose too is it no there, it's yeah is is that their true like, are they doing that on purpose Like to come across more yeah. dominant or whatever? It's like, I don't think so. I think it's just kind of just human nature in, yeah. in a yeah. sense as well. So I mean, who doesn't love showing their buddies of just a day right. where you have, like, if you talk to someone about their hunting day, most of the time, the first thing that would get brought up is their best day. That's true. No one ever starts out. It's like, oh, well, this one day we, we shot four ducks, but we got a, we got a canvas back. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. But we should mention on this hunt, like I said earlier, we we're going to talk about Kent's. This is the first time I ever got to hunt with Kent's new shells, the Kent Fast Steel Plus. What are you guys' thoughts? I I thought it was great. I mean, that one, that canvas back that Austin shot, he yeah, hit it that just, thing. It, it came down hard. It just swooped right down, just whoosh. It was and a, I, I don't know, with the Pattern Master and the Kent, I just sent it and it it dropped for a shot. It, it was, it was a big moving, duck and it yeah. dropped for a it, shot. It was a large, really large duck, and it dropped right away. Yeah, and there was a, I think there was a teal that we shot, and it was still crippled, so we had to shoot off the water. And you can see when that thing, sh- like when it hit the water, right? You can see the pattern. The it's, pattern's it's great. It's like a nice tight line, like well, how you want it. Yeah. It's not. Yeah. Sometimes you shoot those shells, and it's like a pocket, and then you got like BBs everywhere. But it was just a solid tight. Like it, you I never that. thought about that. Looking at that today, I wish I would have. Hopefully. We we get a shot of I, I, tomorrow morning. I feel like I realized yeah. it because I mean we that's, were shooting, that's what we I was shooting that for. federal yeah. two, we were shooting that federal four shot last weekend, and I feel like like when you when you shot that one teal, I was like, holy buckets! It's like, ca- it kind of spread out a little. Just bit. looking at the, the water, just yeah. how how many kind of outliers from the main yeah. pattern. Yeah, yeah, like it seemed like it was way more centered than mm, kind of spread yes. out. The the one like the thing I'm the most impressed about is that the boxes stayed dried. 
Like yes. yeah. they yes. were in soggy conditions and they didn't soak up the wetness. They stayed dry. And I noticed that they like compared to other ammo boxes, they have almost like a plastic film on them or something that yeah. like kind of it like keeps them dry. Like and that impressed yeah. me a lot because I was always like that's like my number one pet peeve when it comes to hunting is my <laughs> ammo boxes always got soggy. Oh my, even I, if they were in a blind bag. Last weekend I have box ammo in my box yeah. right now. The boxes are just they look They're like they destroyed. got sitting out in a field for a year. Yeah. Now is that a quality that you look for in a product when making a decision to, 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 it seems, to an extent? It seems, it seems <laughs> ridiculous. But if I'm like if there's two ammos that are very similar um, that that would be a deciding point if the price point is relatively the same too. <laughs> I feel like, like if I'm would... looking at box A and box B and one has a better box, <laughs> I, I'm probably gonna get the one with the better box if it's similar. Quality animal. wise, not the pretty picture in the well, front. Well, no, right. exactly. Yeah. But yeah. I should know. Kent does have a pretty good picture. They do. They, they, they have a really good just, picture. I do like yes, that picture. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It, I feel like in the store you don't really think about that. I I didn't really think about it at all to be honest until AJ said something. But once he said something, like, like you realize it a lot more. Like. With those those boxes get like kind of flimsy, your shells end up all over your. Oh, and it's just so annoying. You're trying to grab shells. They get shells get dirty. Like they'll they get, get grass on them, like, and that yeah. you know that everybody knows that's not really the greatest thing to be putting through <laughs> your gun. <laughs> Dirt on your shells. That's probably shouldn't be doing that, but we're all probably guilty of that at one point <laughs> or another. So to wrap this conversation up, so the quality's there, but the boxes outperforms <laughs> the quality oh, yeah. of the boxes. <laughs> yes. I'm I'm excited. I'm definitely excited. Hopefully we get on some divers tomorrow cuz that's I want to see how they knock down divers. Yeah, I feel like that's probably the hardest thing with shells is divers go down hard. And like it was it was it was actually satisfying to see that canvas back. Uh, he he did. I was I was watching through the camera and, and like it was like it split second I I was able to get it on camera, but I like first shot just it, one shot that sucker dropped i was like yeah yeah and it, okay i'm sold <laughs> yeah and that that's a hard thing like you if you can get a consistent shell to drop divers like divers is probably one of, divers and geese are probably some of the hardest mm-hmm. birds to bring down like you see some of those divers coming in the water you see like i hit that thing like three times that thing probably has holes all over it but those things just keep on trucking mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. and another thing with divers is if you shoot them crippled a lot of those divers they dive and Yep. That's just it's horrible chasing down. If you can hit a you can hit them good. And that's why I like I shoot that pattern master and it hits them hard. And mm-hmm. that's hopefully that, that can seem like it was patterning amazing yeah. through it. It was through hitting the those pattern masters. Hard. Yeah, it yeah. seemed like it was doing really good. I mean, I don't shoot guns and I could see where my ammo was going. Yeah, mm-hmm. I ran to my hand decoy. <laughs> <laughs> <Right into it. laughs> yeah, you gotta tell this story. We were you were talking up so uh yeah, Jack uh, all morning was talking up his redhead Avian X decoys. They look so good, <laughs> and I, no one will ever tell me differently. Yeah, they were they were looking so good out there, and then this teal comes swinging in. And first, uh, probably first second teal of the day. Maybe. Yeah, I was I was actually worried for a little bit. She was about to pepper AJ's. Uh, yeah, I was spinner. I was sweating there for a little bit. As she I saw that I'm like, please don't shoot my spinner. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that thing got up close and personal, and if. She would have waited probably another second. I probably would have lost like three or four decoys. <laughs> but it it clipped the back of one. There was one hole in the back, but it didn't look like it was anywhere low enough to k- take on water. But it was it was a close call. Uh, at least you don't have any lost soldiers yet. Unfortunately, last weekend I I lost two brave souls. They yeah, are that, a little can, holy. I know you can blame for that one, and it's not me. No, no. <laughs> yeah, that was that was a little bit on our part. Our fault. Not he really. was he was a new hunter. We probably should have <laughs> explained not to shoot the one. Explain not to shoot the one right next to my decoys. <laughs> but you, you live and you learn, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> hey, at least it was yours. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I bought, granted, mine are probably a little less expensive than yours. Yep. Yep. Another thing with like being on the X, I feel like another huge thing that a lot of people don't really think much about is like cover and like blinds and stuff. Right. Cover is huge for for both. Yes. Yep. Like if especially those like. Especially early season geese. Yeah. Well, even late, like late season. I mean, if some some like days you get into like snow and stuff, it doesn't seem like the birds really care. They just want to get on the ground. But some of those hunts, like your cover is probably your most important thing. Like you can, if you're on the X, you could throw out a, a okay decoys, yeah. and those birds are still gonna come mm-hmm. in. But if you if, if you, you got something that's gonna flare in those geese, and they can like something's not right. If they right. feel off, and they're they're just gonna short stop you, or they're just not even gonna come in. Like I feel like cover is huge in this like game. And well, yeah. It's crazy. How? It's crazy to think like back in the day, our dads like my dad. He Red had flannel. like the first. He had the first layout blind, and he was like, "Yeah, this is the f- when the first layout blind came out. This is what they were." And there's just this huge bulky. I'm like, "What do you guys want with this for?" He's like, 
We just laid in the field. Yeah, that's what that's what I did. We would just use we we would hunt like chiseled cornfields, and we would take massive blobs or like clobs of dirt, put them in like a kind of just like a human circuit or oval or whatever, and we would just literally lay in that. Yeah. And my dad would just say, "Do not move." Just don't move. Yeah. It, and we would just lay there in, yeah. in the decoys. And that's crazy. Now everyone's out there with these, like, everyone's got blinds brushed up to nothing. The birds, they're getting smarter. Mm-hmm. They, they are getting smarter. Like, I feel like that first layup line, you, that thing just must have been a goose killer. Yeah. <laughs> because like, they didn't know. They didn't yeah. know. It's like, oh, there's a little bush in the field. Oh, well. Now, they, now they're looking at those bushes like, something about to pop out and shoot me. Yeah, that, <laughs> they're, they're like, something's not right here. Yeah. And, it's a lethal yeah. bush. Yeah, lethal bush. <laughs> yeah, you just wonder what they're looking for when yeah. they're, when they're like approaching a field, like they're scanning or the hunt. I know every time I try and hunt an A-frame, I try and take the cover from the back and just try to make it warp over to the front just to, you know, cover up a little bit more. Like yeah. it probably doesn't do a whole lot, but it just to cover up a little bit more. Just breaking it up makes it yeah. such a big difference. You just got to break up the patterns. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It all depends on where your birds are working you from. Like, if you have birds coming from a roost whale in front of you and they're not really going to get high enough to look into your A-frame, you could probably get away yeah. with a little bit more. But, like, if you got birds that – like, you hunt migrators, sh- yeah. you better be, like – because those geese are going to be looking down, straight down on you for they're gonna probably be a sus. couple minutes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think, I think too, yeah, with kind of looking at your environment as well and seeing if you can play off of any of the just natural pieces there. Like, sometimes in, like, wheat fields there might be more stubble in a certain area that, like – that piled up um, from from the combine, and so maybe you can lay your lay, or your layouts in or up, up against those and kind of extend off of those. So I think playing off of things like that as well, or if there's obviously like a pivot or something, or tree lines, those those types of things to kind of help you blend in with, blend with in the your, surroundings. Um, a frame or any blind with um, natural cover always. That's what we did yeah. last weekend. Yeah. Is we were hunting that pasture pond, and there was a like a thicket of willows behind us so we we had a few of them and we put them in our a-frame just to kind of make it blend in more Mm -hmm. we disappeared but we also paid a little bit of a price we brushed the those willows were really hard to stand up through and shoot it took us how long do you think it took us to brush that in oh gosh it took a long time yeah we for open we probably went a little bit extreme for opening day ducks but we were not about to take chances yeah it was worth it. it was an amazing hunt and we never we had a few birds like shortstop us, but we didn't have anything flare. And no. I don't I don't think they were shortstopping us because they saw something. I just think yeah. they were just local birds and they're they flying around in twos and there. ones and a lot of the ducks are just swimming around twos and ones out in the middle of the lake anyway. Like they didn't look like they want to land by yeah. anyone. So mm-hmm. but one thing I had uh kind of crossing my mind this morning when it was at what time were we out there? Three o'clock? I think we got two. up there at like two. Two two, two three o'clock in the morning. This was going through my head, like I was kinda just wading through the water and, and stuff. Uh, with Campus Waterfowl, we were doing this research tour, and, and through that, I was, I've was i been able to learn just a lot more about just wetlands and a little bit more about the sciences and things to look for, especially, like, characteristics of wetlands of, like, there's like there's two pieces of, of water. Those waters are two, ve- like, bodies of water are two very separate things. They have two different, ro- like, roles in the environment that they can um, and just how they were structured, whether they're built or naturally placed, where they're add in the uh, watershed like all these things i've learned about w- just kind of wetlands and the things that we hunt every single day and it's like a lot of hunters i feel like try to learn as much as possible about ducks and like the game that they're chasing but i don't think i think that's only like 50 percent of hunting like i think hunters forget about there's so much more about the habitat i think they need to learn about and and i think if Hunters would put in the time to learn about these habitats that that would up their game even tremendously. Yeah, I agree a hundred percent. Cause so. like the other weekend we were hunting that one and the one, it was a bigger pond and we were shooting divers and we were like, man, divers on a, like, I mean, obviously North Dakota is probably not as uh, big of a deal that divers on ponds, but then we seen some like cray, crayfish mm-hmm. going back to the water and we seen some little minnows and Jack was like, oh, well, now we know why the divers are here. They we, they got this food here. Yeah, it's like wow. I yeah, didn't. it was. Actually, it was I mean, if it went to rain, we would have had no idea that those crayfish were in there. Yeah. yeah. Yep. And I think, and like, you take a step back because in science, I feel like you can always take a step back of figuring out, okay, why are those fish there? Yep, and right. so one thing I learned at South Dakota or not South Dakota State, um, when I was at Iowa State this last summer, it's like, okay, you got things to look for out of wetland is like inflows and outflows of this wetland. 
And so if it's if there's an inflow and outflow, obviously there's a spot for fish to come in and, and to go out. And so obviously if you're targeting maybe um, like divers, obviously like there's re- there's ways for resources to come into those habitats and and to leave that. And so like that, the, like just ha- looking for those inflows and outflows when you're scouting is like, okay, maybe this this wetland would be a better spot than this other one to go for divers more specifically but if maybe if you're looking for puddlers well yes there's an inflow and outflow but then depending on the wetland too like there's a lot of characteristics that go into it and so you look at a different wetland it's more shallow there's more um more kind of duck food for puddlers and everything so you look at that one it's like okay there's probably going to be puddlers more going to be sitting on this one compared to this other piece of wetland yeah and sometimes you can see that with like two ponds like we saw that like all the two, the two, most of the two we were shooting were coming out of this back area was shallow, mucky, and all the divers were shooting from coming from across the lake where it's deeper, it's deeper, and, yeah. And like you could definitely tell. Like I said, I never really thought about it, but then when you were talking about that right there, I was like, you know, thinking about that, watching where these ducks are coming from, that makes a lot. Like it, you could mm-hmm. definitely yeah, realize just watching where they sit on the water. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's just trying to figure out, and it's like, yeah, you see these divers out in that pond that we were looking at this afternoon. It's like, okay, why did they go on? in that part of the pond rather than the other side or you you try to always just figure that out. And I think we try to fit, which we try to stress, like trying to understand the duck where it's like, maybe it's not the duck. Maybe it's the piece of land that they're on. The duck's trying to survive too. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yep. So I I think that that's kind of a fun thing that hunters can, can go maybe looking into or trying to find more information about going into this hunting season. And I'll, I'll throw campus waterfowl in the mix of, of, a, of a resource to potentially learn some of those things. Because yeah. yeah. that's kind of just where I was able to learn these types of stuff. So, You did a lot of research. Did you do research on that? I think they're called scuds. Scuds. They're like, uh-huh. they're like a, they're kind of like a, like a, I think they're like a, like, they're like a bug in the water kind of. Mm-hmm. They're, they're divers eat them like crazy. I, I think they're called scuds. We haven't done a lot of, that, that would be something that I would like to do for the next season of the research tour is, yeah, Possibly or like a diver know, research study. I know there used to be scuds like all over the place, on North Dakota and Minnesota and stuff. And that, with, with the walleyes getting introduced to some of these lakes, mm. the walleyes would eat the scuds. I think that's what they're called, and that's what actually had a, a big influence on like bluebills. Used to be a really popular duck. There used to be a lot of them around. You used to be able to shoot like there used to be like a, you could used to be able to shoot extra of them like you could mm. teal, but now they're kind of going away. And it was a lot because of the, they they're mainly relied on that scud as a food source. Interesting. But I don't like quote me 100, percent but I, I think they're called scuds. Uh, my dad was talking to me about them because he said they used to we used to have a pond by our house that had scuds in it, but then they started putting walleyes in it, and all the scuds got. The, there's still scuds they in what? it, but the divers didn't go there as much because the walleyes ate a lot more of the food. Interesting. Hmm. Things you learn. Growing up, I was always the one getting taught, but it's it's fun like getting people into the sport. Like today, Austin shot that canvas bag. I couldn't have been more happy. Like, so I, I wouldn't have wanted anyone. Like I wouldn't have wanted to shoot mm-hmm. that myself. Like having him shoot that, it was just like so amazing. Like it's like, it feels so good to get someone else that like enjoys it. And just like, can, you can see the joy in them. Like yep. that sparkle in their eye that you had when you were. Oh yeah. And we got it all on camera for it. <laughs> yeah. So. That was, it was. It'll be cool to see it all on camera, the whole hunt and yep. replay yep. it again. And I say this, every, I, I feel like I say this every trip I go on. The best part about what I get to do is, like, make these videos for you guys. And it's like, yes, they'll go on YouTube and uh, people will watch them for the first, whatever, week or two or whatever. But, week, like, in a life lifespan, two weeks is nothing. So you'll be able to watch this video when you're 30, 40, 50, 60, all the way. And when, when we're all gone... The people that knew you will be able to watch this as well. So yeah, I, f- I feel like I, that's have a di- crazy part. I have a different look at it after like yesterday and today. Like I was like coming into this, I was like, oh my gosh, I'm going to be on YouTube. We're going to be hunting and like, like he's going to be filming what we're doing and stuff. And now I'm just like, it was just awesome just to meet you and like, yeah, yeah. learn <laughs> your experiences from a different area. And like, it's always nice to hear different uh, points yeah. of view and different ideas like, and see how different people do things and uh, yeah, like I just share ideas. That's the best. Yeah. I've barely even been thinking about the YouTube video. <laughs> no, I mean, no. Yeah, I've, been th- I've just it's been just thinking been about just, thought. like, hunting with Just hanging out, yeah. just yeah. hanging out, <laughs> getting <laughs> like, to know you. Tomorrow's just, another day. Right. Yeah. It's We're just, just another day of hunting. Yeah, regular day after of hunting. Him. Yeah. It's, I forgot you were recording after a while. <laughs> right. <laughs> I've, well, I've been holding that darn pie all freaking weekend. <laughs> yeah. That, that, that pie was good. <laughs> that was really good. That was a really good pie. I don't think many waterfall hunters can say that they've had a pie in two different states and then ate it. Almost almost three different states. We need a little backstory here. 
Yeah, I feel like we were leaving out some major I, I, con. I think this one is a uh, Austin. Yeah, this too. is all Austin. Austin is the pie guy. So, <laughs> 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 so last night we got a little hungry on our way back, and it was getting pretty late. So we're like, well, let's just go to the fry pie frying pan. For those of you who don't know, <laughs> it's a little local restaurant here that all the college kids like to indulge in when it's late. <laughs> so we go to the fry pie, and you know we eat, and then as well couple, I don't know, probably what, like a month ago? Yeah. We went we went to the fry pie late one night, and then somebody's like, Austin, we should buy a pie. So you said we should buy no, a pie. Yeah, no, I you were the one that wanted, you wanted the pie. Okay. <laughs> I think it was a mutual idea, but anyways, so we got a pie. And then, like, so then last night when we were there, we I was like, we should get a pie, just, just because. So then we bought a pie, and then... All, so then we're like, yeah, we'll, we'll eat this tomorrow after we're done brushing the A-frame. And so we're brushing the A-frame. We get done. We don't eat the pie. Um, then we, we're hunting. We're like, after the first one, we'll, we'll eat the pie. We don't eat the pie. Um, we take it out in the truck. Uh, I bring it out to the blind. We bring it back to the truck. Um, then we um, we take it scouting with us. <laughs> the, so this this pie was in South Dakota, basically. We weren't we weren't scouting in South Dakota. No, we were we going were. to ask for permission in yeah. South Dakota. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and and then we get back and then finally we uh, we ate it and, and it was it was pretty funny <laughs> thinking that that pie has it, it, by the time we opened the box it was like the the, the, the topping was like kind of smushed to the top of the box. It was, it was yeah. Still pretty. So it was, it was still good. So earlier Derek said something about him having a he he might have to get a pie next time he goes hunting and get a pumpkin spice pie for. <laughs> For Halloween or something or like that, or just a pumpkin pie for Halloween, just <laughs> to stick with the theme. And so we got a banana pie. So I think he was just implying that we're bananas. Like, yeah, he like, had. That's to, exactly yeah. what I was implying. Yeah, yeah <laughs> that's kind of what I thought. You guys are the ones that picked the pie, though. So, uh, uh, Shoot, I don't we, know. You got to p- choose between. I, I know who pecan. picked the pie. The what? I know who picked the pie. Who picked the pie? Oh, that's uh, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, so she's calling between, us all bananas. <laughs> so it's between pecan. I mean, Pecan, <laughs> what was coconut cream pie and banana chocolate? B- banana chocolate. chocolate. To me, we would have had the coconut it was it was it was pretty much banana. I didn't I don't think there was chocolate. There was I didn't no think chocolate there. Yeah, it was all banana. It was just like a uh, chocolate, chocolate shaving. sprinkle or shaving yeah. at the top. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Frying pan. Shout out. Or we, or we got to call it shout, uh, frying pan. Put more chocolate in your yeah yeah banana yeah. chocolate I they pies. They it was chocolate. Clean. They already made the sticker. There's like <laughs> that much chocolate and like that uh, much banana. banana. <laughs> it was banana <laughs> chocolate pie. <laughs> right, right. Oh man, shoot! All right, well we're at eight o'clock where we're at. Um, we got another. You guys got a secret, not a secret recipe, but like a quick and easy recipe. Quick and easy. Uh, oh yeah. I don't know if we're gonna record that tonight or. Mm. Tomorrow after the hunt, we can do either or. Depending. We better we better do it tonight. Okay. We better do it tonight. Need, tonight. need a little yeah. late night snack. I think Austin's getting a little hungry. No, yeah. I'm not getting hungry. I'm just saying we better do it now, otherwise we're gonna forget about it. Yeah, you bad. just want to sleep after hunting tomorrow. That's exactly why. <laughs> <laughs> I need to I need to sleep I mean, before Monday. Did you get enough sleep today? No. You're like riding the roller coaster in the truck. Yeah, today, yeah I think much. you got more sleep than any of us. <laughs> well, I mean, your truck is so bumpy. Gosh. <laughs> <laughs> all right all right i don't even know what to say to that <laughs> <laughs> well i think you guys feel good about the podcast oh yeah oh yeah, oh, yeah. it was uh, a blast all right well i appreciate you guys letting me come up here oh yeah. thank we you for coming. It was, it's been a blast you. you're welcome back anytime appreciate yeah. that <laughs> if you want to come back yeah <laughs> <laughs> we might scare him away yeah, yeah. <laughs> no no I'd, I'd love to love to come back up here it's always fun uh getting back up to the dakotas and, and going out into the field so um but no, appreciate you guys sitting down for the hour, uh, having this conversation. I hope our listeners at home or on the road were able to take a uh, learn a few things, have a couple laughs, um, and in, enjoyed this podcast. So um, I'm not sure where we're going to be at next in our collegiate waterfowl tour. We might just do another shout out on our Instagram page. <laughs> you know, um, AJ will be. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll do fine. I'll do it. <laughs> um, but no, yeah, appreciate you guys' support for listening. Um. Yeah. Be be sure to listen to old uh, older podcasts. Uh, there's a lot of good information out there uh, for you t- for you to take. I think going into this hunting season. Um, but that's gonna do it here in North Dakota at North Dakota State College of Science. We'll see you in the next one.